What kind of dark secret are we gonna discover? Stand on the central plate. Wait, is there a secret mechanism or... Whoa! This is the Forbidden Zone? Honestly, for a place so well hidden, Paimon sure doesn't see anything special. What is that? Or what are we gonna see? A huge door! A door? There are three such isolation gates in total. Three? Generally speaking, I'm the only one who's allowed to go inside. Hence the name Forbidden Zone. Wait, there are three doors? Am I correct to assume you're going to run on back and tell your little Fatui friends everything? Uh, well, maybe uh, not. My mom wasn't thinking of keeping anything from them. <laughs> well, I'd advise you wait until you've seen the whole truth of this place for yourself before deciding whether or not to tell them. Oh, why? Okay, then the travel of water. Really? Please don't be a fight because I'm really not built. Huh. So there's a switch on the side. Stand back. Now what could be behind Whoa. these doors? They all just went up one by one. What do you mean? That's a key gear. Go on, have a look. I'm really not so what we're gonna discover. I've been interested in what lies beyond that gate ever since I assumed leadership of the Fortress of Meripede. Of course, it would be unwise to recklessly open it, but it'd also be risky and negligent to simply ignore any potential danger that could be behind it. The readings on that dashboard have not budged since the day when I first laid eyes on this place. But over the past year, the needle has crept upwards from its original position, Likely because some parameter it's been tracking has changed, if only infinitesimally. Normally I would have ignored it, but I happen to have some free time when I noticed it, so I investigated. Any guesses what the reading could be tracking? Very reasonable guesses. I've considered both of those as well. Unfortunately, our dashboard is tracking something less ordinary. The temperature should vary with weather and climate changes, so for something that rarely shifts, the water pressure is more likely. We ran a few tests to increase the pressure from the outside, but the readings didn't change at all. Later on, a few more possibilities occurred to me, such as a potential connection with the primordial sea. I began to make a few preparations based on that hypothesis. Over the past few days, the needle has moved again. With that and the symptoms that Fremenet displayed after leaving the fortress, I can now confidently conclude that the readings represent the concentration of primordial seawater in the seawater nearby. Oh boy. Concentration of primordial seawater? But we're already under the sea! And that is precisely the problem. We're at the bottom of the sea, and now we're surrounded by toxic seawater. Somehow, primordial seawater got mixed in, and the concentration is steadily rising. Yes, that's very likely. But forget about the two of us. Not even Novalak knows where the primordial sea could be, much less where we could find and plug a leak. Oh. Oh! Seems like you've figured it out. I believe the primordial sea lies directly beneath this sluice gate. For some reason, the primordial seawater levels have risen significantly, and it's now very close to us. The indicators are now red. Although the gate still stands, some primordial seawater has already leaked out and mixed into the sea around us. Okay, that, but why is so bright in this scene? If this continues, 
Soon, it will no longer be able to hold back the Primordial Sea at all. Yeah, I guess this is part of the prophecy. People are gonna get turned into water. Yeah, you know what the legends say. If this place falls, then everyone in Fontaine will be turned into puddles in the span of a night. But that's just too weird! Why would the Fortress of Meripede be built right above a sluice gate for the Primordial Sea? Who built this place anyway? Your expression tells me you think this might be part of a vast, complicated conspiracy. To be honest, you might find the actual answer may be exceedingly boring. It's just that the secret of the Forbidden Zone had been long forgotten by the nation before I rediscovered it with my research. There's no single founder of the Fortress of Meripede in any traditional sense. What we know about its history has been left to us by the people who used to live here. When the previous Hydro Archon, Egeria, ruled the land, all convicted criminals from Fontaine were exiled. The people drove the criminals away like a wolf pack chasing away the banished. The criminals received no sympathy of any kind from the people. They were exiled to the desolate seaside, where they experienced only pain, struggle, and the bone-chilling cold. Some of them began to repent, and prayed to the Hydro Archon, asking if there was still anything they could do. The Hydro Archon took pity on them, and said, You may go guard my secret, deep underneath the waves. And so, leaning on the power of the Hydro Archon, they gathered underneath the sea, and began to build a fortress. They became a community down there in the deeps, and over the years, helped it to grow. As the number of exiles increased, more and more people joined the community. When the first group of exiles died, they left the yet unfinished fortress to their successors. The Hydro Archon continued to lend her support, allowing the fortress and what it stood for to continue growing ever larger. Before long, this dark underwater fortress became the sinner's only home. And with that, the people here stopped referring to the fortress as a prison. They saw themselves as repenting sinners, who would regain their freedom once they had sufficiently redeemed themselves. But as time went on, people also realized that the fortress was a lonely place. Once they had gotten used to life here, they could no longer feel comfortable living in the overworld. Once they had finished serving their sentences, some people left and some others chose to stay. They'd find some idle position and let their withered souls fade away with the ancient secrets of the past. After many, many centuries, few people still remember the reason for the fortress's founding. Now they just see it as an integral pillar of Fontanian society, as the place where criminals deserve to be sent. Now and again, researchers manage to break one law or another and live out their days in the fortress. I learned all this from an elderly historian. Everyone else just thought he'd made it all up. But now you know every part of that history is true. Indeed. That's just as the prophecy says. If this gate fails, then everyone will be dissolved into the sea. Oh boy, I can only sense that they're really gonna do that on a small scale to say, like, they're just gonna do that. Poof. A leak happen and drown some people. To be frank, not really. But sadly, that hasn't stopped this prophecy from proving all too accurate. Prophecies are troublesome things. Just hearing one will create the first wave of panic. Seeing signs of it will bring about the second, and actually witnessing it in real time, the third. Let's go somewhere else. I want to show you something. Oh, thank you for the airport. This is it. Your Grace, perfect timing. The results from our last round of experiments have... Wait, Jurier, he's not alone! Huh? Luravine and Jurier? So that was Sadel dealing. No need to panic, you two. I've already told them about our plan. What? After you warned us not to tell a single soul about any of this? I'm skeptical as well. Are you sure they are trustworthy? The results speak for themselves, don't they? These two may already know more than you could ever imagine. All right then, if your grace insists. 
They seem harmless enough, so I'll trust them for now. Well, how about some reintroductions? This is Jurier, one of the highest ranked researchers from the Fontaine Research Institute. He used to work under Edwin. I trust that you've heard of Edwin. Who? He's the one who blew the whole institute sky high. Everyone knew he was a bit crooked in the head, but you're not a local, so I guess it's possible for you not to have heard of him. Edwin's main areas of research were archaeum and gravimeters. As his assistant, Jurier is quite familiar with them as well. I hired him to be my technical consultant. You... you want to blow up the fortress of Merapi? Huh? Ah, what a lovely idea. I'm already imagining it in my head. Gotta admit, I'm tempted as well. Guys, focus! Focus! <laughs> that taskmaster over there is Miss Lorvine, and is also one of my technical consultants. While Jurier used to be Edwin's assistant, she used to be Jurier's assistant. <laughs> Woo! Are they together? Oh, come on, Pima. See, everyone keeps asking this question. Are you too sure you're not a couple and just using your work as a convenient cover? I... Your Grace, I am not in a relationship with this man. If I dated her, I'd officially be madder than Edwin. Jeez, uh, forget I said anything then. Follow me. Whoa, there's another door that goes right up. Your constant amazement makes it seem like the fortress can do anything. Can he transform me to a giant robot? How do I feel that's gonna happen? What? Paimon really thinks everything's super cool! Okay, what kind of magic is gonna show up? I can just sense it. A giant octopus or something. Well, let's spice it up a bit. And here you go. What is that? Is that a ship? What a huge ship? This is also a production zone that Paimon's never seen before. What's going on? How much do you know about Fontanian history? Nada. Nothing, because usually that's the spoiler. But if I have to guess, don't tell me, they're gonna make the arc. And they. Well, then maybe you haven't heard the story of ancient Lemuria. To give you a quick rundown, Fontaine used to be ruled by the Lemurian dynasty. According to legend, the Lemurian king Remus came to this land after being inspired by divine revelation and found the seer Sibylla, who had taken on the form of a golden bee. Taking the golden bee with him and riding on a huge ship, the Fortuna, he created his nation above the surging waves. He called his nation Lemuria, and used the Fortuna to incessantly search for new tribes and islands, calling on them to join his empire. Why do you feel that's supposed to be Rome? Like, inspired by Rome? There's a ship in this story too? Where there's water, there'll be ships. People believe that hope can always be found at the end of a voyage. Do you believe that too? To a point, I think. As you've already seen, I have a whole factory's worth of labor, materials, and technology at my disposal. Certainly can't hurt to give it a try. So the moment I began to speculate that the Primordial Sea might lie underneath the gate, I also began this project. Were you inspired by the legendary Fortuna? Hmm, maybe. Fontanians need something to hold on to to cope with the impending disaster. Were the workers to find out the truth behind this ship, riots would destroy the fortress faster than any catastrophe. As the fortress's administrator, I'd never make such a reckless call. All right, that's enough talking for now. I'll need another three cups of tea to soothe my throat. Do you have any other questions? Seems like you're good. Come on, I'll take you back. Okay, so if you seem to, I need some tea to some water because I'm so tired. But I feel that one is gonna love him very much. AKA to it game. Oh boy, where do you teleport me now?
I'll leave you here for now. Oh, uh, thank you so much. No worries, but don't forget, it's up to you whether or not you want to share what you just saw. What you do from here on out will likely affect those three as well. Yeah, we'll put a lot of thought into it for sure. We gonna die. Great. I look forward to what happens next. Oh, don't you tell Grancia. Welcome back. Do you want a cup of tea? How can you be so much like Risley, always drinking tea? Huh. Actually, now that you mention it, I just remembered something now. While I was sedated, I could still barely hear two people talking next to me. They were discussing everything, from the leaves, to the water, and even the teacups themselves. Must have been Risley and Sishween. Yeah. I heard one male voice and one female, so it should have been the two of them. They really were just talking about brewing tea. I really can't make sense of this place. Me so, Traveler, Paimon, were you able to learn anything from Risley? Well, he explained everything. Very well. Then, would you mind checking your answers against my speculations? Yeah, I took the time to rest, so I'm feeling a lot more relaxed now. Nobody else is around, and Miss Sijuin is also busy with something or other. So let's just talk here. All right, then I'll posit my theories. I asked myself three questions. Firstly, why was Fremene affected by the primordial seawater? It was because he dove into the sea. My theory is... The long-lost Primordial Sea is probably very close to the Fortress of Meripede. What's with people in asking us three questions? I mean, come on, just be on front for once. Ooh, he's good! He got that right on the first try! That's our Lenny. Secondly, Risley's attitude changed dramatically during the course of our stay here. He ignored us completely at first, then suddenly roadblocked us. Why? I spent quite a long time thinking about this. If he has been monitoring the Fatui since the very beginning, he probably ignored us at first because he was hoping we could find Master Child for him. What's more, the Fortress of Meripede is not part of Fontaine's court system, nor does it report to Udex Nervilet. Risley is basically the king of a no-man's land. As long yep. as the Fortress doesn't do anything about Master Child's disappearance, father can use it to pressure the Fontaine authorities. And while the two factions are pitted against each other, Risley will be free to move between the parties of interest. If I had to guess, he probably has something that he's working on himself. It's likely related to the secret of the infirmary, but I just can't think of what it could be. So do we actually try to tell him? I better not go in details. <laughs> Thanks so much. Then finally, there's the last question. Okay, I give this. I'm gonna give this critic. These characters are too smart for their own good. I mean, come on, how much supply they can be that their point they can just tell by a uh, look? I mean, come on. If Risley does have a plan, what could it be? All I know for now is that his plan probably has something to do with the changing nature of the seawater. He's even gotten Cloran to help him out. Ah, uh, that can't be the full extent of what he's doing. There's probably a secret passageway behind the block in the infirmary, and there's something big in the fortress that most people here never get to see. He has a bargaining chip, and it could be important enough for Father to deal with him directly. I don't have enough information, so I have no idea what his chip might be. But let me guess. You have the last piece of the puzzle. 
Oh, come on. We actually tell him. Oh, come on. I didn't get to see all. I can't believe it. Must see will engulf everyone. Just like the prophecy said. Could Risley have wanted to meet Father to figure out a way to deal with this crisis? If you remember, I once mentioned that Father sees the House of the Hearth as her base of operations, and she truly wants to resolve the crisis. But how could Risley have known that? Or perhaps he didn't know, and just wanted to bring Father over to his side? Which could be why he said he just wanted to negotiate. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I understand your concerns as well, Traveler. I'll figure out a way to pass this on to our father. No matter what, we're on your side. I guess how about that? The two of you have already aided us far too much. We probably wouldn't be standing here right now if not for you. If you ever need anything else going forward, please come to the House of the Hearth at any time. Though you may not share the sentiment, after all that we've gone through together, the three of us basically see you as family now. Okay. You have my gratitude. Thank you for protecting Linny when it really mattered. And thank you for sharing the secrets of the fortress with us. We didn't think you were going to do it. Uh, why are you being so formal all of a sudden? Given your strength, you might not need our help at all. But if you are ever in danger, we will try our best to protect you. Aww, the sound of that makes Paimon feel all warm and safe inside. Uh, Paimon... Paimon's hungry. Oh, uh... You've done so much already. Go get some food. Alright, then we'll catch you guys another time. Oh boy, something's gonna happen, isn't it? <sighs> I feel like... I should try to become someone more capable of helping. You're incredibly helpful. Lenny thinks so too. Yeah, you two are always telling me not to push myself, but aren't you just like that as well? It's time for dinner. Welfare meals now being served in the coupon cafeteria. Since when did this? What's this thing? dinner as well. Uh -oh. Huh. You're right. She's actually sitting in the fortress cafeteria. What would you like to eat? Yep, you can. I've already talked to our chef, Mr. Wolsey. It's all on me today, so you can get whatever you'd like. Huh? What are you playing? Oh, come on, let me read it. Ah, so delicious. Is this how it feels to be freeloaders? Wait a second, we did do plenty of work after all. Feeling full yet? How's the food? Delicious. You know what? I don't like the music. Just play now because I can totally see that something is gonna happen. Oh, I'm so glad to see you all so happy. Oh, see the expression on your face just now? But the muscle here just moved, which suggests that you're feeling quite relaxed at the moment. Sijuin, do you do this to help your patients or to better understand human beings? <sighs> Bit of both, I suppose. I'm a melazine, which means I'm very different from human beings. I must know what you're thinking if I want to take good care of you. Yeah, but why you human? I mean, come on. You're really good at taking care of people. Even though you're so short, you still talk and act like an older sister. Really? 
You're reminded of an older sister? <laughs> That's great to hear. Oh, and what did you mean back in Risley's office? When you said that you were protecting Linny and his siblings as well? Oh, that. I just asked His Grace to look out for those children, especially that diver boy. I was getting a bit worried after hearing that something was wrong with the water. Thankfully, Glorand is very strong and managed to save him in the nick of time. His Grace also sealed the pipes after Glorand left, to make sure that Linny wouldn't impulsively chase after his brother. Although the path was blocked, we still stationed some guards there to stop anyone from approaching. They were instructed to only open the door once Miss Glorand had returned. Oh, and I was keeping an eye on Mr. Linny as well. We had to press him, but we couldn't allow him to be in any real danger. You were all super considerate and really thought everything through. <laughs> it's just what we do down here at the fortress. At least this has been his grace's style for as long as he's been the leader. Oh, I really wish Monsieur Nervula would come down here more often too. I feel like he'd like it here, <laughs> with all the darkness and chaos. Huh? Okay, I want to make a that joke, but oh boy, I cannot wait for see those comics. Get a good night's rest, you two. You both worked very hard. Oh, Chloe, you see. Have something to say? It's you two. How's dinner? It's all right. Miss Sijuin really put in a lot of effort. So we heard that Risley invited you to come down to help, and you saved Fremenet too! You sure work super fast! Oh, it was child's play. Still, Paima didn't know even Champion Duelist could take on side jobs. Oh, and why aren't you eating with Sijuin and the Duke? Won't you get bored eating by yourself? Miss Sijuin was with you, and the Duke has business of his own. Hmm. Actually, didn't Navia say that you went out for dinner with her as well? When? Yeah. First time in a long time. Does First she be still time saying? In a long time? So you mean you've gone out to dinner with her in the past? In the past, yes. She but not that though. You seem to be enjoying yourselves here. Things will be getting messy at the fortress soon. Don't run around unnecessarily. Oh, oh come on, let's go. I wanted to take some pictures, come on. I guess I'm gonna take pictures when she's gonna be in the gacha. Uh, 